actually ready to do the lining paper. I did actually put some more filler over some of the parts um, just to build it out a bit more. Now it's ready to sand and seal. One of your most important things, a dust mask. Very important when you're sanding anything. Second most important thing, gloves. Eye protection if you need it, I'm okay. Then I've got a sanding block. Let's go for that and a closer look. Just got some clips on the end and you fold it over and trap it. Perfect for sanding the, the actual flat. I've also got some worn sandpaper and then another new piece of sandpaper folded up. Large, quite large really. And again that's for near the edges um, because the block you know, it's better just using a piece of sandpaper around the edges. Right, uh, and you dust the brush. The sandpaper I'm actually using is uh, P60. P60. You don't really need uh, anything more than this, I find, when it wears down a bit. It's actually good, it's a bit smoother and it's good for uh, the woodwork. I've not got my dust mask on for the minute, so you can hear me speak properly. Um, but usually, you know, it's always starting at the top and working down halfway, and then you can get rid of your steps, and then do the bottom half. <coughs> now the pitch rail, that doesn't really need sanding because we've already sanded it, and we can give it a light sand when we come to paint it. So for the time being, you only need to concentrate on that edge there. Now, I always use a piece of sandpaper and you can see where it has been wearing because when it's folded over, I like them sharp edges to get into the corners. So what I do when it starts wearing like that, I'll make another fresh corner and I'll keep working the uh, sandpaper like that. So we've got another fresh corner there, there's the old one. So basically there's nothing left of it. So that's the top edge. And then the flat sometimes, like I say, a larger piece of sandpaper. And you can have it under the edge there. And then you can turn to your sanding block. Remembering to try and keep it all the same direction. And then once you've done a bit, you can dust it off. Now, all this process, you were in your dust mask. And what I like to do sometimes is shut the windows, shut the door, and trap the dust in the room. Because you've got your dust mask on, you're safe. And just allow it to drop and then you can hoover up at the bottom because I find sometimes if you've got windows open in the house the dust travels right I'll shoot the screen to the bottom it's the same principle really um, but in reverse order and then give it a bit of dust off because obviously you're working on that top edge you can have your hoover with you so you vacuum cleaner with you and then you can just suck that up and then brush it to one side. So then when you're coming down, get to the bottom. And then using your smaller sand piece of sandpaper, you can do the skirting board. By the time you've finished, it should be pretty good. I'll just give you a closer look at that. 
that's not bad at all that nigh on perfect right now once you've done all the sanding you can seal the wall again with diluted PVA when it comes to corners and you're sanding it can be a bit difficult to get the nice square edge so what I'll do is I'll take an old screwdriver and I just carve the corner out to how I want it So I'm going to hoover up now and then I'm going to seal the uh, top edge of this skirting board again because it's worn off to uh, burr again and then we're ready for the diluted PVA. In primer's dry now so we're ready to mix the PVA again. There's not much water in there, just up to me halfway. And you, don't, you don't need loads of PVA. That's plenty. And then just stir it up. Same as last time. Starting at the top. Load your brush. Give it a quick shake. Probably notice it won't soak in as much on this coat. Once you've done a section, wipe it the woodwork with a gap cloth. Don't let the PVA dry on anything. Lock it down. And make sure you've done runs and then work straight down and then move along. The PVA is dry now and we're ready for lining the wall. First of all, what you need to do is set up a bit of a scaffold because can't reach the picture rail to actually cut the paper so I don't need a tall scaffold because I only need to be a certain height so I've got a couple of planks a long one and a short one because the actual distance is 13 foot 9 inches in fact sorry 12 foot 9 inches remember your measurements 12 foot 9 inches so basically I'm going to have a pair of steps at this end because in the middle you want to be able to cross your plank with joy. too high that because I'm going to actually put a line across the wall using a spirit level and that's really the height I want to be working at because I want to follow the line and push the paper out up so we're going to take that down to there see what that's like it's perfect right actually not too bad in here so what I might do is just 
use this. Every room is different, so your scaffolding, you know, your setup's always going to be a little bit different. That's not too bad at all. That. That's not too bad because I can get most of that. Next step is to give it another light sand down, and I'm using this finer sandpaper. This is uh, P180. I'm not wearing gloves this time, so make sure there's no screws or nails, and if there is, be really careful. I'm actually going to use the palm of my hand slightly on the wall, so if I feel any nibs. I can get rid of them because the last thing you want is them under your paper. So again, only bring it down halfway. You can hear, you can hear by the sound how smooth it actually is. three quarters of an inch so I've got plenty if there's any deviation in the pitch rail so if it's sloping to one side anything like that and then what you want to do is take the pencil and usually go off where the center is making sure you're giving yourself your overlap Taking your spirit level and working off that centre mark. You can have a make a straight line across the wall. Just, just come down, Miles. You're best getting this right. It just makes life a lot easier. And I usually turn the spirit level around every move. A joiner taught me that once.
you can mix your paste now. Now for this lining paper, I'm using just a packet of solvite. Depending on what room you put in the lining paper on, you may want to use a different paste. If you're putting it in a bathroom or if you're putting it in a kitchen, you may want to use a paste that is more suitable for a room that might have steam. Uh, the R Alva. One of them is this. This is uh, Beeline. That's really good for heavyweight vinyls and difficult papers that won't stick. Uh, like I say, condensation. Where you get that? Now you can get uh, for lining paper ready mixed, which is fine. That's okay. If you're putting um, a fibre liner on, insulation paper, which is quite a fleece, it's like, then you need a special adhesive. And that's the one. Because it just won't stick with anything else. Right. On to mixing the paste. Clean bucket. And I've filled it up with the right amount of water it usually says on the packet that you're you know for the paper that you're using it'll have instructions because you can change how much water you've got in your bucket and it'll change the thickness of the paste this is a bucket I use all the time um, I've learned to keep my thumb on the side and when I fill it up as soon as it touches the bottom of my thumb it's got enough water in Make sure your packet is shaped and it's all to the bottom and then cut off a corner. Now, you want to get the water stirring, get it moving round. And then slowly start pouring your paste in. But continue pouring it in. One motion, don't stop. And just keep stirring it up. Make sure you go to the bottom as well. Slowly, it will start to thicken up. You want to keep stirring it, don't let it settle. Flakes of the paste are activating and absorbing the water and the swelling up. Once you've got it to a certain stage, you can leave it. That's not too bad now. I'll give it another good stir up when I'm ready to use it. I've got the paste bench up now. Um, I'll just show you some of the gear. Paper hanging brush, scissors, my Stanley knife with a nice fresh blade, pencil, tape measure, and a screwdriver for around the light switch or any sockets. This is the lining paper. I'm using a thousand, and it's a double roll this one. So that's about 60 foot, 10 meters in a roll. Uh, sorry, 10 meters in a single, so 20 meters in this. Good stuff that. Right, I've already got my paste mixed up there. Now usually what I do, I'll have my toolbox set up at the side there. And I'll show you, I cover that with a piece of the lining paper and then the paste goes on there. 
I've also got a bucket of water clean with a cloth and my rubbish bag because it's very important to pick up all your cuttings and put them straight in the bag. Don't leave them lying on your plank or on your steps, even on the floor. If you get them on your feet, you can stand on your plank and slip very easily. This goes for a lot of wallpapers. When I open them, it, it, the paper is all you know. It's always shrink wrapped in plastic, and I have a feeling that the machine heats up the ends sometimes of the paper, damages it. So what I usually do is open it up because I always find when you get to the end of a roll you're left with half a foot or a foot in the end. So what I tend to do is use that last foot than the first foot. So I'll cut that off using the scissors. And what I'll do with that is I put it on top of my box. And then my paste goes on that. And my brush on the side. And it's just at a better height to uh, take a dip out of. You're not going down for your brush all the time. Looks nice now, that paste. Right then. When it comes to putting your lengths out, always work with your paper so it's face up. One, it's easier because it doesn't roll back on you. If you try it the other way, that's what happens. So you always have it. So the face faces you. Not only that, with patterned papers, you can actually check over the pattern as you're going and you can see any faults or anything like that. Um, right. So then I'll line it up on the edge of the bench and I've marked out a foot to a six foot mark on my bench. The wall is 12 foot 9 inches but we need a bit of overlap on either side of the wall so I'm just going to go over you know 13 feet um, probably 13 feet 2 inches because I don't mind a bit of waste I'd rather have waste than you've missed a little bit of paper because the wall was that much out because seriously sometimes they can be a lot out then I'll open the paper up on the bench And on the six foot mark, I'll, I'll, uh, make it, I'll pull the paper back on the six foot mark. And then straight down on the bench. Now I know that is 12 foot now because it's two sixes. So all I need is to pull the paper back and because I've got marks on the edge of the bench I know there's a foot mark there so that's 13 foot a little bit over the 13 foot just to make sure and there you go nice straight edge as well so basically I'll let that roll down to the other end and I'll let it go over the other side of the bench. Be careful if it's a finished paper, you don't want to be damaging it. Taking the next length, you can do the same. I'll just show you. Because I know for a fact on the wall, I need one, two, three, possibly four and a bit. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a second. But I'll do four for now because I know I need four. What I usually do is I can bring the other one over so you know exactly the same length. And 
lining them all up straight on the bench. Basically, repeat that till you've got four lengths on the bench. Four lengths on the bench now. And um, what we need to do now is turn it over. But turn it, turning it over, obviously, it's all going to roll up. So what we need to do is remove the memory out of the paper. So the trick to do that is rolling it the other way on itself. I'll just show you. So. You have to be careful and you do this with a lot of papers, 9 out of 10 papers, this is what you do. And you just roll it back. down on it. See the difference there? It's not rolling back on there. So don't worry about the creases, as long as they're not thick creases, never fold your paper and put a big thick crease in it, you know, if you ever just slightly pull it, push it down, you know, right, because once that gets wet and it dries out on the wall, it shrinks to the wall and it's just super smooth. And that goes again for any paper. Right then, so you be, you're ready to paste your first length. Usually what I might do is I'll paste all four lengths and then start with the first one on the first wall because generally they need about 10 minutes soaking. Um, this thousand probably needs about eight minutes, but I know it takes me five minutes to paste all them. Right, I'll just show you the first one. So because we're actually lining the wall and we're putting it on horizontally, there's a special fold that you have to do in the paper. So load your paste brush first. Now make sure you spread your paste out evenly and work up to the edge. never want to work back across that edge because you'll get paste under the edge onto the other paper and onto the face of your finished paper if you put the finished paper up. Cut it. If you get anything in it, remove it. Put plenty of paste on, always put plenty of paste on. Sure you spread it out evenly. It's a bit slidey this paper. And that's why you always keep one hand on your paper as you're pasting. So it doesn't slide about as much. Uh, from the 
brush that off. The edges of your paper are really important for getting paste on. Make sure you do a few passes over them. Okay. So what you want to do is fold it about the size of your hand. First fold. And then each fold after that, just a little bit bigger. Paper's always in line. Last bit, you can just fold it back, leave it on top like that. Just show you that. And that's how you want it. So I'm going to put that to one side now and paste the others. Make sure you remember which was your first one you pasted. Now, don't worry too much about the folding because at the end of the day, that's not the critical part. The critical part is to get them pasted as quick as you can and make sure all the edges of the paper has got a nice layer of paste on. When you're handling paper, the worst thing you can do is touch it near them edges. If you set paste off with your thumb or your finger around them edges, that's where you're gonna get it lifting once it's dried. Right, I just want to show you something. Now, you can't tell on the film, but the actual line I've put across the wall is perfectly horizontal. I know that because of the spirit level. But let me just show you because taking a measurement, going off the bottom of the picture rail there and then coming down the tape measure to my line, you can see it's on 22 inches. Now that is the size of the paper. Let's go and have a look at the other end of the picture rail. Again, on the bottom of the uh, picture rail, when you come down, look at the difference. That's sat on the 20, nearly. Now let's have a look how level the actual picture rail is. 
You can see the bubble there. It's way out. You know, that's what causes you problems sometimes and that's why I like giving a lot of overlap. So at the beginning, if I hadn't have given it the uh, three quarters of an inch overlap, I would have had trouble at that end. But usually you're better checking that your picture rail's straight first or doing a few measurements. But because I'm so used to it, I get away with it. Taking your first length, like your shorts, you can peel back that edge and hold it on the other side. And then taking the beginning of it, open it up and put it on the wall above your line and then work the edge up to your line. Making sure you've got an overlap onto the other wall. Bring it down to your letter and make sure it's on the line. And then taking your paper hanging brush and begin to spread it out and then release another crease. Release the crease. Right. As you release every crease, make sure it's on your line. And then work away across. Following that line. And push out any air from the back, up and down. Not across really, because you're just pushing the bubbles around. You want to push them out of the paper. Push the paper so it actually is back on the line and following it. Okay, generally that's the piece up. So, what I'll do is I'll show you that end and what I'm going to uh, and how I'm going to cut it. Now you can see the lining paper overlapping there, so you can work that into the edge underneath, like that. And then you can see how much the pitch rail was out and then the paper actually isn't touching the top. But that's not a problem really, because all I'll do is put some filler along that top edge and you won't even see it. Um, so this bottom edge now, what you can do is you can mark it with your pencil and then peel it back and then cut along the pencil line with your scissors or taking your Stanley blade you can cut along. Now you can use your fingers as a guide on the actual picture rail so you know you're pushing the paper in at the same time and it's right up into the corner and then just draw it along. I do small kind of jerky motions because it helps cut through the paper better. That should. There you go. Right, and then once you've cut it off, wipe the paste off. You can also use your scissors to mark the paper better underneath just to get a nice straight edge into that corner and then with your pencil you can mark over it. Sometimes you can actually just follow the crease and that goes for some papers where you can't put pencil on them. And just show you this corner. Overlap, and what I've done, I've made a small cut 
to there so then that piece actually slips into that corner like so so I've just got to trim that off I just want to show you along this edge of paper I've just cut with the blade now you can see all that furred up so right, you know this is why I don't like using blades especially for a finished paper um, it just doesn't cut it neat enough all the way along now with this being lining paper it doesn't matter too much because it hides and it's all getting painted but if that was a finished paper it'd be absolutely awful so I tend to use my scissors 9 out of 10 times if I can there you go first piece up and you can really see how much that picture rail is out so never trust anything um, they're always never level or they're never vertical all right next piece don't forget to do the rest of the sanding before you put any more pieces on again taking your length open a piece up and what you have to do is allowing the overlap and then you don't have to go straight up to it straight away you can just take the next length out so you're following it all the way along and then slowly push it up with your hand so you're just touching it you never want to overlap and then taking your paper hanging brush up and down and then once you've spread it out you can just double check that line with your fingers and if it's not close enough you can push it up a little bit and then carry on but what you don't want is to have it overlapped a little gap is better than it being overlapped so then next piece open we'll just carry on where the light socket is just go straight across it and then you can see where the corners are and press on the corners and then taking your scissors making sure you're very careful and you're not going to hit the socket you can cut out to each corner going over by a couple of millimeters Back to your paper hanging brush. Making sure you're on your line. There you go. And that's how you get around your light switch. And then you can mark it again with your pencil round. Cut them pieces off. And usually what I'd do is carry on and cut everything else and just down here and then I'll come back to the uh, light switch or socket unscrew it and tuck the paper behind Always make sure you wipe the paste off everything. And where your joint is going across, make sure, especially if you're going to emulsion the wall when you're finished, and there's no paste, come out of that joint onto the paper because it will react with the uh, emulsion when you're, paste, uh, when you're painting the wall. Three lengths on the wall now, and this wall it's only worked out as four lengths, uh, but sometimes. That bottom length 
works out so it's less than half of your lining paper width so then what I would do is only pay only cut a length to the size of half and then split the length and then that's one for either side and you splice it in the middle less waste and it's a lot easier but this one is actually 20 inches so there's just going to be a little bit of uh, waste at the bottom I'll just show you a bit of the cutting off at the bottom and then the finished wall just before I do when you've done your sanding and you come to the bottom make sure you dust it off before you put your lining paper on so on the bottom of the skirting again make sure you've folded the paper nicely into the corner of it. you can mark it with your scissors to make it nice and sharp you can use a pencil and then you can cut along that with your scissors or my preferred method with lining paper on a long length like this is a nice sharp blade you've got to be careful sometimes it can pull the paper but as long as you're watching out for that and then always make sure you wipe off the paste right then I'll show you the finished wall just a quick look at that bottom edge don't worry about some of them marks there because it's just paste let that uh, dry out and it'll be nice that's the lining finished so again a couple of the most important parts make sure your wall is nice and smooth and make sure that all your paper is nicely pasted soaked and make sure that all your joints on your paper are all butts and not overlapping. 